Buddy died yesterday of gunshots to the head and chest. Buddy was walking home from night school when someone drove by in a caddy and gunned him down. Nobody knows why and nobody probably cares. Buddy was my best friend. Sometimes he would bring me candy and chocolates and <laughs> once a cake without any icing on it. But I didn't mind that effect. But now that Buddy's gone, I, I feel like I'm on a one-way street or a dead-end street. Buddy was smart. He would bring me books to read and music to listen to. He said that, he said that from these books, I could find certain tools to use and let him fight my way through all the garbage and hate and anger, whatever all that meant. It meant something to Buddy, though. Because I know he won't. I know him too well. He ain't gonna let me go to the funeral. You just watch and see. <laughs> nah, nah, you don't know. He like that. He ain't gonna let me go. He'll come up with some lame excuse. I don't... Yeah, I know. Lord knows I feel off-center. What time is the funeral anyway? 8 p.m.? Okay. You going then? Okay. I'll see what I can do. All right, bye. Sometimes me and Buddy would spend hours in my backyard, playing with the grass, picking up twigs and dead leaves and bruised mangoes from the old mango tree and hurl it all around. and we would play with all the raggedy, rickety things my daddy would hoard. They could have been anything. We would toy with it, come up with things to do with it, just like that. We both had a wild imagination. I used to sneak a peek at Buddy sometimes when he wasn't noticing. It was fun watching Buddy just looking at things, recognizing things, giving him names. Whoever heard of a funeral at night, I ain't gonna let you go. Daddy, you knew Buddy, knew how well he treated me. Why not? It's just for an hour. I said no. That boy was no good. If he got shot and killed in a drive-by, then Lord knows what he's up to. We've got to survive. The only way to do that is to stay here. Read a book or two. Teach yourself what the world has to offer you. There's nothing like the comfort of your own home. Young girl like you shouldn't be caught dead in a funeral at night. Who knows, but there might be another drive-by. Too dangerous. It's too dangerous. None of us is safe here. Anything might happen. An airplane might fall right on our heads, Daddy. <laughs> Come on now. The funeral's about to start in half an hour. A no is a no, Alicia.
Me and Buddy used to walk these streets at night when it was cool and the wind blew steadily. We liked the nighttime. We thought it was mysterious. We used to lie down in some lawn and look up at the stars and then we would run around the neighborhood. It was so dark and the trees and houses and parked cars looked so different. They were shrouded in darkness and we liked it that way. Me and Buddy, we both liked the nighttime darkness. You want a square? No. No, cause you don't smoke, or cause you're too young? Neither. That's good. You're indecisive. So what you doing out here so late? Funeral. Your own? <laughs> nah. My friend Buddy. He was shot and killed yesterday. Drive-by. That's the norm nowadays, but it ain't like how it used to be back in the day. You know, you used to just fight. Now these kids will pick up a gun before anything. The truth of the matter is, it isn't white against black. It's black against black. It's white against brown, white against white. Well, people don't care. They're just doing whatever the hell they want to do. But, but it's your responsibility now. I guess I got to go to that funeral. So what are you going to do? <laughs> Buddy liked music. I want to sing him a song, the blues, Buddy's Blues. I think about some of them kids who was shot to death in my neighborhood, just like Buddy. And all I can say is that I hope I can sing for him too. <laughs> 